Good day, traders. Welcome back. We are your compass in the world of trading, and today we dedicate ourselves to an essential topic that is often overlooked. Order management. How you set your orders can make the difference between success and failure. Today, we will clarify how you can use the various order types to your advantage and protect your capital. Let's start with the basics. What is order management and why is it so important for your trading success? It's not just about knowing when to buy or sell, but how. The right order can minimize risk and maximize the likelihood of a successful execution. There are a variety of order types and each has its own purpose. From market orders that guarantee immediate execution to limit orders that let you determine the price, each has its time and place. Market orders are the simplest tool in your arsenal. They are executed immediately at the current price, providing you with a quick entry or exit opportunity. But beware, in high volatility, you might get a different price than expected. Use market orders when you need to act quickly, and execution is more important than the exact price. Always consider market conditions before using this type of order. I personally advise against using market orders. We always want to define a price at which we enter. If we are not triggered at our price or price range, we are glad it turned out this way, as anything else would undermine our risk management. More on this shortly. Limit orders give you control over the price. You set the maximum or minimum. They are perfect for planned entries and exits and help you trade the market on your terms. Use buy orders below and sell orders above the market to secure the best prices. Generally, we always use a limit order for our take profit, that is, our target price. We want a price X and no surprises. Stop loss orders protect your capital from unexpected market movements. A stop loss order is less a type of order than a point where we exit a trade that's moving against us. For stop orders, we use a market order. This is simply because a limit order must guarantee a price. Should the price move too quickly against us due to some news, an event, or something unplanned, it could happen that we are not triggered with a limit order and our loss continues to run unlimited. In this case, and only in this case, we use stop loss orders. Take profit orders secure your gains before the market turns again. Essentially the same as with the stop loss order. Take profit is not an order type, but just a designation of when we exit a trade that has hit our target. Here we will use the previously mentioned limit order. At Blue Bull Trading, we exclusively use bracket orders to enter trades. This means we never, and I repeat, never, place a trade that is not a bracket order. A bracket order is a combined order. We define our entry. This is called a stop limit order, a stop loss, which is a market order, and a take profit, which is a limit order. Stop limit, our entry, is a combination of stop and limit, as the name suggests. This means we define from which point we start entering and up to what maximum price we are still willing to enter, even if we are not triggered immediately. For example, our entry might be at $10, stop limit, our stop at 9.5, stop loss, and our take profit at 11.5. Since we cannot assume that we will be triggered at exactly $10, we define our stop limit order as follows. Stop price $10, limit price 10.1. This would mean that as soon as the price reaches $10, a limit order with the price 10.1 is submitted to the exchange. So, if the number of shares we want to buy is available for under 10.1, we will be triggered. If the price shoots up too quickly to say 10.2, we would not be triggered unless the price comes back down to 10.1 or below. Once we are triggered with this main order, the other two orders, namely stop loss at 9.5 and take profit at 11.5, are activated as a so-called OCO, one cancels other order. We are now in the trade, and if either the price drops to 9.5 or rises to 11.5, we are thrown out of the trade, each with a loss or gain. So, theoretically, we can set a bracket order and guarantee from the beginning that we enter at a certain price. 
accept a maximum loss of X, and exit with a gain of Y. This will be important later on. Assuming the entry is at $10, the stop loss at 9.5, and the take profit at 11.5, then once the $10 is reached, our stop limit order is executed so that the 10.1 limit order is placed on the exchange. If it is now possible to buy the number of shares we want for under 10.1, we would receive them. Once this is done, stop loss at 9.5 and take profit at 11.5 are placed. The aforementioned OCO order ensures that when the stop or take profit is triggered, the other order is deleted. You can basically close your trading platform after you have placed your bracket order, but at least after you have been executed. I even recommend, especially at the beginning, only watching the price until you are in the trade. After that, I advise focusing on new trades, or, especially for beginners, closing the program, going offline, and checking shortly before the market closes to see if the trade needs to be manually closed, because neither of the two orders was executed, or if a gain or loss has already been realized. Immediately enter this trade into a trade tracking spreadsheet and analyze and comment on it afterward. What is the 1% rule, and why do we need it? The 1% rule states that we should never risk more than 1% of our capital per trade. This should be seen more as an upper limit, not an obligation. I even advise beginners to risk only $5 to $10 per trade. Why do I recommend this? It's quite simple. In the beginning, your job is to learn and continuously improve. You gain nothing if, during your learning phase, which will last between 6 to 24 months, you lose more money than necessary. And I guarantee you that if you trade seriously and have no experience, you will lose money. Anyone who tells you otherwise has either never made money with trading themselves or is trying to sell you something. If we now want to risk 1%, which, as I said, I advise never to risk more than $5 or $10 at the beginning, even if you have $100,000 in your account, then every trade is the same. Let's say you have $5,000 in your broker account and always want to risk 1%, then that's $1.50 in this case. Your number of shares is now calculated from your absolute risk of $1.50 and the distance between your entry and stop loss. In this example, you would therefore calculate $10 minus $9.50 equals sign 50 cents, and now divide your $50 risk by the 50 cents. So you would need to buy 100 shares to lose a maximum of $50. If your trade goes into take profit, you would therefore win $50 asterisk 3, for example, $150. This corresponds to 3R, or 3 times your assumed risk. I just showed you that we use a stop loss to limit our loss. However, there are several types of stop losses. There are trailing stops, which automatically follow at a certain distance from the price. However, at the beginning, I advise you to use a fixed stop. This will never be moved further away because we never want to lose more than only R. But to keep things simple, as I said, I would advise you to first place a bracket order with a fixed stop. Similar to your first driving lesson, trading will overwhelm you at the beginning anyway, so we can discuss such gimmicks later. I, on the other hand, am not a fan of automatic trailing stops, as they never 100% reflect the explicit dynamics of the stock. Trading is simple, but not easy. What I mean by this, you should not unnecessarily complicate your trading. I don't know any trader who stands out because he uses extravagant strategies or indicators and is therefore more or less successful. Every successful trader has simple, duplicable strategies that are tailored to him. It starts with the trading style, such as day trading, swing trading, core trading, but also 2R versus 3R. Some trade only in trends, others only against the trend. Everyone should find their niche that suits them best. Internalize that it is more important to survive long in trading than to achieve short-term financial success. These will come with time anyway. I also recommend you to trade in a simulator only until you can execute orders flawlessly and have familiarized yourself with your platform. Trading without the emotional stress of losing real money will not make you resistant to it. 
you will perform significantly worse when switching from the simulator to the live account because the psychology factor is greatly underestimated, especially when you suffer long losing streaks. This is where it really shows whether you are mentally suited as a trader. Can you still stick to your strategy after the fifth loss in a row, or do you deviate because you've found a new, better strategy? Be honest with yourself. How often have you been at this point? Are you ready to take your trading skills to the next level? Then you can't miss our next video. In our next episode, we delve deep into the fascinating world of candlestick analysis. This powerful tool is the key to unlocking the secrets behind price movements on the stock market. If you want to learn more and stay updated with our latest insights, don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe to my channel, and leave a comment below with any topics you'd like us to explore in more detail. Your feedback is invaluable in helping us create content that best suits your trading journey.